Welcome everybody to another exciting episode of Home Kit Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara, here with my pal, or as he's known to his closest friend, Vuvuzela Vivian. It is Steven Robles. <laughs> oh man, I thought you were making up a word there for a second. Then I was like, oh no, that's the uh, they they blow them during cricket games, or whatever, right? Or football games? A cricket the, game. Oh my god. The Vuvuzela. <laughs> Isn't that what a Vuvuzela? Yes. The, the, I'm the, sure the, they the... do during oh. cricket games. I my brothers have always taken them to all of their soccer games. Um, oh, you guys have Vuvuzela. But I'm sure they are the okay. most annoying instrument, or at least they are very high up there. I haven't bought something I, on the I show in a while. I'm certain. I haven't bought something live on the show. I'm gonna see if I can buy a Vuvuzela on Amazon, <laughs> and then uh, you know, can do that during the Apple events. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, remember, I think it was during the Olympics like many years ago, and everyone was like, This is a oh, you can get them on Amazon doing it. Of course, it. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> this one, it's got two thousand, it's thirteen dollars. This will absolutely be in the show notes, uh, so you guys can get it. But uh, this is a movie, I'm gonna put it uh, real quick. This is so not HomeKit or iPhone 15 or anything, but this is what you guys come for. I know, I know it. This is uh, this is the Vuvuzela. Oh, wait, not that one. Here we go, Vuvuzela. There it is. So, uh, 26 inch oh, Vuvuzela oh, Stadium that's Horn. Pudgy Pedro's famous yeah, stadium Pudgy Pedro. horn. Yeah, exactly. I, I've heard of him, <laughs> Pudgy Pedro. So, yeah, there you go. That, and that'll be in the show notes. Don't you worry, listeners and viewers. That, that is there. Andrew, so it's a weird time to record right now. We're in, lim- we're in limbo. We're in like the, uh, the 4D bookcase that Matthew McConaughey is in at the end of that movie, you know? And, uh, it's, it's like we can see into the future. We could see the iPhone 15 Pros in our hand, but we're also in this weird place before they have even arrived. And uh, I'm speaking in code here. We record early, and so uh, many of you may already have the iPhone 15 Pro. We will both have iPhone 15 Pros in our hands, so, but I, I can't, I mean, we can't ask each other about it. I don't know what to well, do. What did, you, what did you ultimately end up ordering? <clears throat> what did you commit to? The iPhone 15 Pro Max, the big size. I want the better camera. I got it in titanium blue, which after seeing all the reviews, I might immediately regret. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Did you see those photos on The Verge? Like, they looked great. Was, now, the, the scratching thing, that was always a thing. You knew yeah. that. So that's, yeah. that's on you. Like, that was a thing we knew before <laughs> the reviews came out. It's true. It's true. Yeah, and so th- there's like one image of a blue one with like a huge gash in the side, and there's like a bright silver color because it has scratched all the way to the titanium. I really don't, unless you drop it, I feel like that's not too much of a risk. Like it's going to get fingerprinty probably, but all these photos are like super macro shots. I feel like from a distance, if I'm just using it like normal, people aren't like coming up on your phone like oh, you got a scratch on that thing, you know, so I feel like it'll be fine. Um, so I'm excited about that, and that that should be arriving uh, Friday on the, on the day I'll be watching for the UPS truck. I have mine delivered. Do you get yours delivered or you do store pickup? So I did store pickup, um, for a couple of models this time just to go and get it. But I also uh, have my UPS driver's phone number and (laughs) I'll just text him (laughs) and he'll swing by. And drop well, off. Oh, now wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you? How did you? Do you know him personally, or was it just you developed a relationship over time? It's like a long con. Like how do you? Um, how do you do this? Well, f- first, it, we we get a lot of packages here just from work and everything yeah. uh, going in and out. So I do know most of our regular shippers uh, fairly well. But our UPS guy, uh, he's actually been delivering stuff to like he's been delivering to my parents' house uh, since I was in like high school or middle school. So Whoa. he's been around for ages. So huh. he was like, hey, I heard the new phones are coming out. Just text me. And I'll make sure. So I live actually what? fairly near the UPS facility. So I could actually go and pick them up at the UPS facility too. But the way that the routes are structured, like he basically goes past my house and then they'll put it on the way back. Like they'll they're like, right. hey, you're going to drive past Andrew. You're going to go do all the furthest ones. And then as you come back to the repo center, depot center, <laughs> We're going to then you'll then you'll do Andrews like last. That's how his route is structured more often than not, <laughs> uh, and it's obnoxious. So he'll he like I'm just gonna swing by and and you know toss him at you as I go. So oh, that'll help man. Uh, if I need to do that. I need to figure out how to bribe my UPS guy. I think I need to put some drinks out there, maybe some snacks, because he comes by fairly often too. Maybe if he starts associating 
you know, and I can next, well, it'll be next year by the time I get to them, but texting a UPS guy, that's a life hack right there. That's sweet. Well, I don't have that. I'm probably going to get mine at four in the afternoon. Uh, but so what did you order? <laughs> so I eventually settled on the 15 Pro Max in natural. And I did it after seeing, well, I, I looked at photos and, they pan, and I panic purchased because I was still going back and forth between silver or white and natural. Because mm. in Apple's photos, they just looked yellow. So I was really mm. debating mm. on going on just white and getting it because it just looks so clean and Apple-like. I really liked it. But then all of the hands-on was just nothing but, oh, man, this natural's going to be the one to get. This is going to be the popular one. Like, yeah. everyone's saying that. And then, um, so I, I committed to it. And then even, like, those photos on The Verge where the blue one looked so sharp. Looks good. It looked really good. The natural looked great. And I was talking to their photographer, and he's like, nah, in person, like, the natural one looked better. Oh my so word. I was like, okay, I feel better with my decision <laughs> right now. I hope it won't look yellow. We'll see. Yeah. All right. I mean, I usually put mine in a case anyway. I have, you know, I already got my yeah, cases. I was ask, did you get these? I did. I got a green, the Cypress green silicone, and I have a fine woven. This fine woven one, like as a case, has gone through the ringer on social media and YouTube. It is like... yeah bad the verge even had an article of like this is the this is the worst case so uh, what do you feel because i know you did the video and you got like every color what do you feel about it after a few days i mean i don't feel strong about it i wouldn't say that i hate it like i don't think i would do a whole article that it's like the worst and i hate it but sure like i i haven't carried this around yet and i think in that verge article they did comment on one of the things which is what i which is how i felt which was i don't see any way for this to age gracefully like correct i just i i don't yeah no um <laughs> they did the fingerprint finger scratch test i did that right away too and i'm like oh that's yeah. that's not going away uh, i no. might have done that like on the last episode where you could like see it but i just ran the back of my fingerprint on it and just left an indentation and it was there so I'm like, how do you put this in your pocket with literally anything and not end up with permanent scratches down the back of it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's not good. There was that one YouTube video, The Verge linked it. Um, the guy, he basically like tore off the back. Like he tore the, the, the material off basically. And he revealed that there's like a memory foam layer under the this yeah. the back and a memory foam layer in the inside which makes it feel a little thicker and more premium. But this does, does not feel as premium as leather. Like, here's Apple's leather case from last year with the 14 Pro in umber. Feels so good. I've been using it, like, the past few days because I'm just like, how did this compare with my woven? Yeah, this is not, like, premium case material. I'll, I'll try it. I'll put my phone in it and see what it feels like long term. But just listen. That's what, that's what I think I'm at. I'm going to try and not. Um, you know, we were talking yeah. about putting a review of these cases out uh, next week. I don't know, I don't know if we're going to wait a little longer just to see how this ages but i'm really going to commit to it and see how it, it does but yeah i don't know even the do. little things like lint sticking to it and trying yeah. to wipe off lint is is obnoxious i don't know yeah. i can't tell if i'm just griping because i really was a fan of the leather um mm -hmm. like i get the environmental mm -hmm. impact impact thing and it's it is hard at the scale that apple is at uh to maintain that footprint and not feel hypocritical. So I get it from that standpoint, but sure. I still have not found one that is, I really liked apples. There's, I think, yeah. uh, Neil, you know, Apple, old Apple Insider, Neil. Yes. He was even Neil saying, Hughes. like, uh, the last two generations or something, <laughs> their cases have been garbage. So don't feel bad that they're gone. But I still really? liked them. I was still a fan. Hmm. Yeah. I, d I do think that their older ones really patinaed nicely. Like, I remember I still have an iPhone 5S leather case lying around, and it looks crazy because it's like, whatever, seven, eight, eight, nine years old. But it's still also kind of cool. So, anyway, we'll see. So, we'll, we'll be able to, next episode, we'll be able to give even more, like, actual hands on impressions because we will have had the phones for about a week. And so that should be fun. But we actually have some HomeKit news. Home, home stuff happened. And uh, also two five-star reviews. One is actually a correction, which I think is hilarious. So Washington <laughs> Pond Frog from the USA. He said very kind words. Thank you for your five-star review. And then Endo1976 from Australia. <laughs> we had mentioned, I think, last episode that he gave a three-star review. But the actual words he wrote were like a glowing review. And he was like totally messed up. 
he changed it to a five star now. I don't know if somehow it registered as a three. So thank you, Endo1976. That's one less three star and one more five star rating. So there you go. I remember, uh, I think, I don't know if it was a family friend or relative. They thought that you had to like tap each star to like fill it in in order to give a five star rating. So like you tap one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> But it registered after the first, <laughs> so give it a full one star <laughs> rating in that podcast. So don't do that. She's going right to the fifth star. That's what you got to do. So maybe that was it. <clears throat> anyway, all right. Big updates here. New products. Signals for HomeKit. This is a, an app. I think I forget the developer's name, but this is the website. He. This has been updated now with interactive widgets, oh, standby Corey. mode support. I'm say Corey. Is it Corey? If I go to his about page, I'm literally on his website right now. Matt. His name is Matt. Matt. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, we were close. Uh, close. It was close. <laughs> uh, he updated his app, Signals, which is a cool, like, you know, program your lights to flash or dim. I think he got a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so what do, you, what do you know from this? Because yeah, I know you use Signals in the past. I've not played around with it yet, but I'm just excited. I mean, we're getting all this yeah. fun new stuff that's dedicated for iOS 17. We got standby mode support. So you put it in the, like he mentioned that it's great for like in the kitchen. So you put it in there. Um, you mount your phone whenever you're done cooking, tap it, and you like flash some lights at a dinner time. Um, there's a new extra large style widget for up to 16 different signals or one massive one. Um, <laughs> He says, this is also great if you've got, like, an iPad mounted as the wall, uh, on the wall for, like, a HomeKit controller. Um, right. And there's a free shortcut automation. So there's some nice stuff in here. Besides cool. them, there's been a ton of, of HomeKit updates. So I started putting these together. I'll yes. be honest. So I, I started, Stephen, to do mm-hmm. a video on my favorite apps for iOS 17. Oh, and I tough. asked on Twitter, mm, hey, X, hey friends. Known. I got a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of you are devs, uh, or a lot of you are Apple fans. Tell me, tell me your favorite apps that, that, you know, that were updated. I have got like 200. Yes. Messages, emails, responses. Yes. That's great. Amazing apps that have been updated for iOS 17. And I am so overwhelmed. So I don't know if we'll be able to get that video out, but I'm glad that there's at least some recognition for a lot of these incredible apps. But there have been... We're going to have another one. I, I, th- I stuck it down at the bottom. It's not a home kit, but it's an app update, so we can throw it here in a yeah. second. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of a couple of other ones. What's the home batteries, I think, got an update? Um, okay. Well, there's, there's that been, one, I mean... Like... Like Widgetsmith has been updated, uh, where you can yep. add Widgetsmith widgets to standby and everything. Fantastical has been updated, so not only for standby, but even their like widget that's on your home screen. So I use a Fantastical widget, uh, this one right here, which shows like kind of the full calendar month and then the individual event listing for today on the side. And before, if you tapped anywhere in that widget, it would just open the app. But now you can actually tap on like the days in the month. And actually jump to that day right here in the widget and see uh, the, the events for that day without even opening the app, which is really cool. So, yeah, that, that's awesome. That was fun. Uh, yeah, a um, lot, lot of apps. Home widget was updated um, pretty obviously. Like, no surprise there. Um, home batteries, that's the one that it was called. Um, yes. Yes. That home was ba- updated. That... Okay. Go on. No, no, no. I'll, I'll have to check more. I mean, obviously, we have more app updates for like from the big names in a moment, but it's it's been pretty cool. And I've been oh, oh, let me ask you because standby, I didn't have the beta on my main iPhone all summer. I just been uh, so I just put on my main phone now, and I finally got standby mode. I wanted to make a HomeKit widget where I can do scenes while like a good night scene because it's not, my nightstand is next to my bed. Every time I try to edit the HomeKit widget on standby i go i turn off recommendations because i want to actually choose specific scenes and devices that it can control i cannot get it to do this for anything i think it's just an ios 17 bug but like my good night scene is nowhere in that listing and then every time i try to like click a couple devices it just kind of like crashes back out to the main standby screen and it doesn't like change do you have have you had that experience or have you been able to customize that i haven't tried to customize that yet um, okay. I would 
so it's crashing. Obviously, that's that's just a bug. I think it's right just a bug. There. Yeah, it's just a bug. Um, yeah, try try home widgets because that one was just updated, fully interactive with standby mode. Uh, okay, well, home. Well, 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 all right. Well, all right. <laughs> I will try that home widget. Okay, I like it. We'll we'll put links. I'll try to put links to some, if not more, of these apps in the show notes. But also, Andrew's going to have a video, so you should probably watch the video, and then you could just have the, the full listing. It's going to be eight hours long, covering <laughs> two hundred app. I'm kidding. I don't even know what to do though, Stephen, because I was going to download these, but I'm not buying two hundred apps. So <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. I mean, maybe the ones have free versions. I mean, you can show the screenshots, you know, and if they have like product videos, you can maybe pull some yeah. of those. They'll appreciate. Yeah. I mean, if if you reach out, I don't know, just tag as many of the develop, developers and say, "Listen, I'm, we're going to make a video about you, but you know, send me a test flight or something. I don't know, a rede- redemption code." I do like when uh, they send test flights. That's that's usually the best thing because then I don't feel like I'm just asking for free apps or anything, which I know they're yeah. they're at least like it's not like they're specifically like massive dollars, and I am helping them with promotion, but that was not the the point of it. So like I do like when I can get a test flight link. Uh, for the release yeah. tools that I can use. Right. Well, all right, we got more updates, more news coming. But before we do, I'm going to see, uh, Andrew, I want to have a conversation here. Are you ready? <clears throat> We're ready. Hola, Andrew. ¿Cómo estás? I don't understand. Oh. <laughs> You're supposed to say, estoy bien, y tú? And I say, yo estoy bien. And yo puedo haciendo the Babel. The Babel sponsor spot. <laughs> Because that's this this week's sponsors is Babel. Listen, Andrew, I know you didn't understand what I said just then, but this fall, you, you yourself, and then you, listener and viewer, can start speaking a new language with Babel because it works. It tratando. Wait, tratando is try. Hacer is to do. Yo puedo. Anyway, Andrew's wearing a camiseta rojo. Okay? I got you there. He's wearing a red shirt. So there's that. Listen, you can... Learn to speak a new language, Spanish, Japanese. You can learn French, Italian. You know, especially if you have relatives maybe that live in other countries or maybe that, like I know um, my grandmother spoke Spanish their entire lives and I wasn't really able to talk to them in Spanish and I really wanted to because that was their native language. My mom is still fluent in Spanish and I still can't, like I don't, I wouldn't understand most of what it says, but I'm getting it because joy estoy, oh, I don't know how to say using. I'm trying. I'm trying my best, Babel. This is why I got to keep going in the app. I gotta, <laughs> because got to keep learning. And you can get in there too. Because it's, listen, instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are more like games, you got you know what I'm talking about. Babel's quick 10 minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Language is idioma, just so you know. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations, and all of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. And they also have this really cool thing where you speak to the app, and it will listen to you, and it will say how to adjust your accent or how to speak more like the natural language so you actually sound like you speak it, which would be cool. You know, if you go to another country, maybe you're traveling, uh, planning something for next summer, start learning the language now. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babel is better. It's great alliteration. And uh, one study found that using Babel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Honestly, I'd probably learn more with Babel than I did with a semester at college. But anyway, with over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babel is real language learning for real conversations. So here's a special limited-time deal for HomeKit Insider listeners. Get you started right now. Get 55% off. That's 55 55%. 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for HomeKit Insider listeners at babbel.com slash HKI. So get 55% off babbel.com slash HKI. Babbel is spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash HKI. Rules and restrictions may apply. That link is in the show notes, too. You just click it there. Thanks, Babbel. Gracias. Gracias, Babbel. But, oh, I need to learn. Thank you, Babbel, for sponsoring the show. Okay, I'll get that for next time. Gracias, <laughs> Babbel. No, next Para. time I want you to do the entire spot in, like, Chinese. Like... Just every Andrew. week, a different language. One, one language <laughs> at a time. Uh, but yeah, but I'll try. can teach you so many. It can, it can. I can say Nihauma. Nihauma is like, hello, how are you well, in Mandarin? Move on to the next uh, one. Guten Tag. Je veux que matin ignore. Anyway, okay. Uh, next, Tuo. Tuo, this is a new and upcoming brand. Those of you who like us talking about different brands than, than kind of the big ones. Tuo, 
I have their button right here. This is the 2.0 button. It's a matter button over thread. Love that button. Works really well. Well, now they're coming out with a contact sensor. It is, uh, I guess you can actually get it right now. It's $30 contact sensor. It's a very differently designed contact, contact sensor, actually. It's kind of a cool look, different than the kind of the normal just round wrecks that you would uh, normally see. Uh, but it is thread and yeah, a new option for it. No hub required, obviously, because it's just thread and matter supported. Looks cool. I don't know. I like that contact sensor. Look at that. It's cute. Yeah. Sure is cute, Stephen. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> all right. I'm just very excited for the, the contact sensor. I like, I like, I like contact sensors. I got them all over. I do wish. I have to say, Akara's is it the the whole the P1 is the present sensor. The T1 is the light strip. Is it the F1? That's a racing car. Is it, uh, I don't even know. The, the, the newest one that's matter, it's like a big, chunky, like, oval thing. That's one of the few contact sensors that are big enough where I have, like, the doors and the molding in my house are, like, offset. So I have to, like, prop up the one that's on the door side uh, in order to actually read as closed. You know, kind of one of these uh, offset things. And the Akara one is so big that it actually just reads. I don't have to prop it up, so... I don't know. Do you ever run into that issue in your house, or is your stuff, like, flush? Um, It's pretty flush. I mean, my door kind of looks okay. ridiculous because I've got, like, eight contact sensors going down it. <laughs> um, the one window I have in my studio is really tough because I get a super deep window cell. Like, it's a foot deep. Mm. Um, And the window goes all the way to the edges. Like, the window is there, and then there's no, like, extra wall or molding around the recessed window. There's just, you know, the wall. Wow. Um, yeah. So I have like I'm looking at like half inch of a mm. of a gap around the edge of the window where I can actually put like my contact sensors. So like I had put the Eve contact sensors. I put the one side on the window. I put the other side on the the molding. Great. It's like their matter connected one. Performance mm. perfect. Everything's good. Um, a year or two or whatever goes by, and I gotta swap the battery out. Right. I can't get it. There's not enough space to open it. Oh, <laughs> oh no! You gotta yeah, rip it I out. Have to just rip it off and put it on another window. Rip it out. It doesn't fit. Uh, uh, so yeah, that was unfortunate. That's annoying. Yeah. Well, it's a casualty. It's what we do. It's what we do for the home kit insider audience. This is what we got to do. Just rip, rip it out. So, uh, another big update. Hugh. Philips Hue adds matter support to existing bridges. So all your, f your your Hue stuff, your Hue stuff, you can now get used with your matter controllers. Or if you've had it in HomeKit forever, like I have, this really doesn't affect me at all. But uh, but it has matter support now. And so there you go. If you want to use matter controllers or like one of the new Echo control devices or Google Nest ones to control your Hue lights, there it is. That's it. Uh, that's the update. Matter. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, I guess. We knew this uh, was coming. We yeah. don't got to go into it too much. It's matter support. Yeah. We knew this was coming. Everyone's already controlling this thing anyway. But it, honestly, I think it's a big deal just for a big name to roll out support because it's the big names that have to add support before we have other brands committing to it. Right. So I th think this exactly. is a very good thing. Yep. All right, this next thing, Arlo, our friends at Arlo, we've talked about many times before, they have announced, uh, announced updated to the essential range of cameras so these are new cameras from Arlo. They have at least four different models here, like the $100 uh, XL outdoor camera, $50 outdoor. They have a $40 indoor and a $80 video doorbell. Now, here's the thing. These prices sound amazing, and Arlo is good. Uh, it's a good brand. I've had good experience with Arlo cameras, like their floodlight camera and stuff like that. Uh, but it doesn't have HomeKit at launch. They have promised HomeKit in 2024 now andrew it's been a while since we've had a situation like this but i feel like i don't well you tell me i, I feel like we typically say don't buy a product with a promise of home kit and like that's why you're buying it maybe wait till it actually gets the home kit update and then pull the trigger or just buy it if you just want to buy it as an arlo camera to use in the arlo app arlo's pretty good they do have home kit support for a lot of their cameras they requires the hub usually the arlo hub i think in all cases but I don't know. How do you feel about this? What do you think? Yeah, that's always a gamble. Um, I, I will look at a brand's history before I judge them. And I will say that Arlo has a history of this, of releasing a camera without HomeKit and then adding support 
later. So mm, okay. that's definitely a thing that has that has been in Arlo's track record of them following through. So okay. I, I believe them more than like, especially when it's a new company. Hey, look at this. We got an air purifier. <laughs> We're going to totally at home quit in like six months. Just buy it now. <laughs> six months tops. Right. I promise. Yeah, I don't believe that. But Arlo's added no. this to like 10 cameras or something already. So they have the stuff in there to, to do it, the relationships to get that done. I just don't understand why they always seem to launch without it and then mm. add it. I don't know if it's just because the process does take long and they're like, we're not waiting for Apple certifications to get done. We're just going to launch and then we'll add it retroactively. Like right. that must be it. I don't, it must not have hurt or hindered their, their sales in any way. So they're like cool with it. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I do like their stuff. I think the biggest, for me, yeah. the biggest thing with Arlo is they have a good subscription plan. I think it's pretty verbose. They have good security features that I like with their like E911 situation. So mm. if you're out and you see somebody breaking into your house, when you call like the 911 uh, through the app, it'll route it through your home's location. So mm. like say, you know, say I, my house is in, is in Dublin, but I'm out in like, Eastern area on the other side of Columbus. If I would call them when one where I was, oh, someone's breaking into my house. Okay, are you at your? No, where's your house at? Like, and you got to route it through the correct police department. Mm -hmm. I really like that. I think that's such a smart feature. So there's a thing about Arlo that I like, and if you already have other Arlo cameras, these are great additions to that because they're low cost options. You already have a subscription plan for multiple cameras for recording and everything. All of yeah. that's good. But yeah, don't look at these and like, oh man, I'm going to buy this right now because it's 50 bucks and I'm going to wait uh, for HomeKit support. Like, that's the only reason I'm buying this right now. I, I wouldn't say to do that. Yeah. Yeah, same. Same. I do like Arlo stuff, but let's see. Let's see if it has HomeKit in 2024. All right, this next one, this is from the uh, the makers of Halide. Luke's uh, camera is the company name, but this is like Sebastian DeWitt. And uh, this is a new app that they have released called Orion for the iPad and this is really cool it is basically a app that turns your iPad into a display for you know maybe your camera if you're doing some filming and uh, you could turn it into a display for anything if you want to connect to like a video game system to your iPad and you know see that on a bigger screen if you have like the 12.9 inch you can do that this does still work from what I can tell it does still require a video capture device like a USB-C with an HDMI uh, female uh, adapter to get the video signal into the iPad. Uh, but the app is totally free. It's called Orion. We'll put a link uh, in the video description. But especially for those who, you know, the 12.9 inch XDR screen on the iPad Pro is amazing. And to use it as a reference monitor, like live if you're filming, uh, is really cool. So I want to try it. It looks really cool. What do you think? So I did a video during the beta period on how you could use your iPad as a monitor for your console, which is really sweet. Like I plugged in like my PS5 to my PlayStation and had a display, a screen. It's yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, and I was using some other app that was in its, its test flight beta period uh, before iPad OS 17 had launched. This looks way better and nicer. And like you said, it's free to use. But they have a pro mm -hmm. version called Orion Pro, which includes AI upscaling what? for your systems. It's got CRT emulation for retro <laughs> games. So if you plugged in a retro game console, you could do that. And there's uh... image adjustments that you can use to play around with and adjust what you see on screen. Like there's various uh, effects and stuff that you can change. So all that five bucks to completely unlock the app forever whatever yeah. like that's awesome and yes they even have um on the lux website they have like a list of recommended ones they have like a yeah. recommended USB-C capture card that is uh 15 dollars like we don't have to like recommend you go to their one that they had uh recommended yeah. but uh, there's a ton of them i'm using one right now to plug in my icon that i had actually used Ooh. for that during that whole phase but i just think this is so cool plug in your your game console when you have a second screen plug in your camera and use this as a monitor when you're recording videos like i could i could ditch my atmos system and just switch over to my ipad 
Like, that would be a thing that you could do, and, and that's pretty darn awesome. So it's not specifically smart home related, but this is a big iOS, iPadOS feature that I think is just super clutch. Yeah. This is uh, one of the recommended USB-C capture devices. I was going to get it because I was like, I want to try this. Uh, shipping uh, what is it, next week, so Wednesday, September 27th. I, th- I did get it, and so I'll be... I think that's what uh, I have, there. Stephen. That's the exact one I is have. Is that what you... That's yeah. what you have? Well, look yep. at that. Look at that. That's very cool. I mean, 19 bucks. Can't beat that. This is the Guermock. Guermock. That's not a Babel thing. That's just the brand name. <laughs> so, <laughs> Guermock. That's cool, though. Yeah, it's exciting. So that, that's a fun app, and uh, I do I want to try it, uh, you know, as maybe a monitor when filming because I have, like, one of those little Atomos monitors, but it's like in, you need to charge the bespoke battery for that thing, and then it can be kind of heavy and awkward to mount it. I think like, plugged in. Right, but if you were, like, going to shoot on location or you wanted to shoot, like, outside or something, you know. Well, sure, but don't you yeah. also have to charge your iPad for that exact situation? Yeah, but the iPad, I mean, it's always charged. And that, that, the I don't iPad know. Battery... I'm here in my studio. I have, like, a battery bay. I have all my Nikon batteries, and I've got my yeah. Atlas batteries. When I'm here in the studio filming, I'm everything is plugged into power directly, so I'm not killing batteries. And if I'm going sure. out, I just grab my kit and, and go. No, 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 that's good. I, I know, from my experience, like, I think the iPad would last way longer than, like, an Atomos. And I, I have, like, one battery. I'm not that serious. But you also so. have to get some sort of holder like with it with the atmos you have the ability to like mount it right mm-hmm. onto your um uh, cold shoe right yeah. at the top versus yeah, yeah. your ipad like because i thought about the ipad <laughs> mini and like that would be nice but i don't know where mm. i'm going to mount this thing yeah they sell like ipad mounts that are just you know yeah. like the expandable grips or whatever i don't know if they do it for the 12.9 inch i feel like i wouldn't trust it even <laughs> even if it was cause i wouldn't trust my 12.9 inch in that but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's still it's still be nice just to, you know, sometimes I just take my camera off the little mount and, like, put it on this side of the desk to film towards it. And I, you know, I would just connect my iPad real quick to it because sometimes a little flippy screen tries to flip around a little too much. Like, it won't, you know, force, I want to angle it up or whatever. Anyway, I'm excited to try for a bunch of things. Maybe, like, with a new... Do you know, so with a Nintendo Switch, this is maybe not home care related, but, um, hey, you play a Switch in the home. For Nintendo Switch, is there a way to connect it to a display without the dock? Like, is there some kind of device you can get for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, the dock happens. isn't special, Steven. It's not like a magic box that does things that nothing else can do. There are That's... little Nintendo Switch like adapters, basically, that allow you to plug it in, um, which it might be just that, like um, what, you, what we were just looking at. You might be able to plug that in and... Yeah. Because I thought, like, it needed, you have to, like, I don't know, it, it knows. There is a... The Switch knows. <laughs> like, and it knows when it's not connected to the dock and it doesn't like to go to the display. And uh, I know I know there's, I know there's, there's might be things for this. I just don't know. Why there can is. I just, uh, so, yeah. there's a couple yes. different ones that I'm going to send you. I love how they put them in the, the Switch colors. Uh, I right. think it's funny how that they do nice. these. So basically, they're just like Apple's little uh, digital AV adapter. That's what these are. That's what these look like. There's okay. one, and then this also uh, claims to be one. Okay, well, Andrew's gonna send those to me, and I'll put those in the show notes also because <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, yeah. Well, People uh, call them like portable docks, essentially, portable but they're just either a really docks. beefy, like the one is a beefy HDMI cable that has an additional power input on the one side. And the other okay. one is like more of like an Apple's digital AV adapter, but skinned and styled to for a switch. But sure. yeah, their their intended is like portable docks, basically. Okay, okay, that's cool. All right, we'll put that over there in the show notes too. All right, you know, because when you're traveling, you don't want to bring the dock. It'd be nice to be able to connect to a hotel TV or Airbnb or whatever. So anyway, here's what you do, Stephen. You cl- you yeah. plug it in to your iPad, and then hotels now support will support airplay in hotel room tvs so then you would mirror your ipad to your hotel room tv and boom wow boom uh okay well yes that's cool too (laughs) all right we got a few other things and then andrew has a a hands-on little early impressions that i really want to get to because i'm excited for it but we have a second and final sponsor today we want to give our thanks to fast growing trees fall we're in the fall season right now it's planting season 
And listen, many plants do better when planted this time of year. But you have to know where to start. What do you what do you do? What do you get? And especially where you live affects the kind of plants that will thrive in your environment. That's why I love fast growing trees because Flor I'm in Florida and Florida is, is hostile to everything. Human beings, animals, especially sure. plants, technology with the humidity and all the salt. Everything just dies. It's all it's all just dies. It's all dangerous. But fast growing trees, you tell it, listen, I live here in the, in this hostile environment of Florida. Will anything grow? And Fast Growing Trees answers with a confident yes. Yes, we will send you things that actually grow. And they have. I've gotten uh, persimmon trees. I've gotten a, a Carolina reaper bush. I've gotten a, a peanut butter plant fruit tree, which is the craziest. I didn't even know that was a thing. But you could do that. You put in your ge- geographic location, geographic location, and then it will tell you the plants that you can get to thrive. They have shrubs, trees, bushes. It all looks great. So whether you're looking to add some privacy shade or natural beauty to your yard, Fast Growing Trees has in-house experts ready to help you make the right decision with growing care advice available 24-7. Andrew has a green thumb. You know, he has all, he has the plant. I mean, you have, what do you have? You basically have like a whole uh, greenhouse in your backyard, right? Like literally? Don't you? I've got multiple varieties of strawberries. I've got Italian San Marzano mm-hmm. tomatoes for making oh, pizza sauce and pasta sauce. I've got wow. a bunch of different pepper varieties. I've got a couple different apple trees. Our raspberry bushes right now are, are full of berries. we got all sorts of fun stuff. Amazing. Amazing. So Andrew's great at all that. I am not. But I can be confident because fast-growing trees experts can help me <laughs> along the way. And also the worst part about buying trees and shrubs is like going to the hardware store, getting your car or truck dirty, and then you got to drag it in. Fast Growing Trees ships it to you just nicely sealed in the box. It's all ready to go. Gives you great instructions on how to care for it. Just makes the whole process better. So even if you've never had a green thumb like me, then you'll make it, <laughs> Fast Growing Trees will make it feel like you do. Just like over 1 million happy Fast Growing Trees customers across the country. Plus they have a 30-day alive and thrive guarantee so you can trust everything will be healthy for years to come. So listeners to HomeKit Insider get 15% off your entire order when you go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash homekit, but only through October 15th. This is a limited time deal. 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash homekit, fastgrowingtrees.com slash homekit for 15% off. That link is in the description. Thank you for uh, sponsoring the show, Fast Growing Trees. You know what goes next to a tree sometimes outside your house? Is it, is it a cherry tree? Because I want oh. a cherry tree. <laughs> Wait, is that the Abraham Lincoln thing? You, gotta, you cut it down? No, no I just uh, want a cherry tree. Oh, I just want a cherry tree. Okay. Oh, I, okay. So up next is actually not that thing. I was confused there for a second. Uh, Amazon <laughs> had a bunch of announcements. Uh, they had, um, this is the uh, the new Echo Show 8 and a bunch of other things. Andrew, I think you, you know what you're talking about here with the, with this Amazon stuff. Can you walk walk me through what happened here? Yes, so basically Apple or Amazon had its big press event and one of there's a there's a whole bunch of things. I'll I'll run through the list of items, but one of the things that I was most excited about is their Echo Show 8. So they were touting so many new things here and this is their like smart display. This is like this is the the Google one. You know, I'd love to show an Apple one on the show one day. That'd be great. Uh but it just mm. makes me really want an Apple smart display. So yes. this thing has new glass on the front. The back is like nicely curved, has redesigned speakers on the inside. Um, they have new microphones to reduce background noise. Of course, it has matter support. The home screen is so cool and has like proximity sensors in it. So when you're far away, it's like the Ecobee thermostat. And it'll show you a generalized view of things like the weather and statuses. But as you get up close, it reconfigures the display with more granular information, which is mm. just so smart. Uh, it's That's 40% sleek. faster than last time in responses. It's 149 bucks available now and ships in October. So as I said, it does have Matter support. So any of your Matter accessories, your HomeKit accessories that work with Matter will be able to work through this, which mm. is very, very cool. Um, they also showed off like their new uh, generative AI uh, mm. version of their assistant, which is really, really cool. It sounds great. They also have a new voice coming for their assistant coming like next year that sounds far better than it does oh. now. 
Like, there was some seriously cool stuff packed into these things. Um, another device I was really excited about is new Eero Max 7 routers, one of the very yes. first Wi-Fi 7 routers to be coming out. They look super clutch. Um, other things to try to go through here, there's new automatic lighting. Uh, so Amazon system be able to detect brightness level and activity in a room and then intelligently decide to turn the lights on or off. You'll no longer need to walk into a dark room and search for a light switch or even ask the assistant to do it for you. It'll just do it. So that's a super cool feature. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Echo Show 8 I talked about. There's a new Echo Hub, which is a smart home control panel. Um, it also <laughs> looks really neat. Um, there's new Echo <laughs> Frames with smart glasses and new Echo Pop for kids. There's a bunch of Fire TV stuff, Fire TV Stick, 4K Max second gen. Great name, Amazon. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> there's a Fire TV sound bar that is, I've heard it's very Sheesh. loud and very cheap. So that's cool. Um, Ring has a new Stick Up Camera Pro and new Ring Routines. Uh, these will allow you to view, enable, or disable Amazon Assistant routines you have set up, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. There's new Blink stuff, new security stuff there, new like module is what it is but i for me the biggest stuff was the echo show the new like smart home hub they came out with and the euros um but honestly cool. it, it just shows like obviously there's like folks in different areas but it just to me it feels like apple is starting to fall behind in this stuff even more like how do they not have a smart display yet and we haven't heard any rumors in a hot second really about a launch becoming any more imminent so i i'm still hoping that this is a thing and that we're going to see it a lot sooner rather than later yes same okay well that's exciting yeah, wi-fi 7 we just got 60 on the iphone my goodness like yeah calm but seven's down. gonna be the good one seven don't buy uh -huh. a 60 router unless you like have to seven is the update seven is the update that actually has speed improvements 60 is just really adding that six gigahertz band so it does help with your mesh routers as like this super strong dedicated backhaul, but Wi-Fi 7 has massive improvements across the board, including a big jump in speed. Okay, well, all right. Very cool. All right, and uh, lastly, before we get to your hands-on thing, news, Robin ProLine. This is, we've talked about this a long time ago. This is a home kit of doorbell and you know very kind of industrial very expensive i think this is like hundreds of dollars uh but they came out with a new color it looks like of that doorbell brass and uh that's it i think that's the news that's the news that, yep. that's new the color news. i new mean color. you have to live in a spot that this makes sense that do you can i i missed it did you show that second picture steven because that looks much less weird I'm trying like I'm trying that looks to, like it makes sense so. to me and it, it blends into the house i think that looks cool versus kind of like the standard ones i don't think they work so easily on like residential buildings as much um depending on the situation like doesn't that look pretty nice like that looks pretty cool that looks nice i i'm what i'm saying steven you and i are not rich enough to no. put a robin on our house like they just that's it. It's true. Yeah, it, it, it look that that looks cool. That picture looks cool. Uh, I'll I'll give him that. But yeah, I want uh, I want to put the robin on the gatehouse of my compound. Mm. So when someone pulls up to my my big old iron gates, I can see them and they can press it. That's what it should be. There it is. There it is. <laughs> well, that, that that looks cool in that picture. All right now. You have a couple things that I want to see the hands on. I want to see it, Andrew. Uh, well, I won't. I won't give it. I won't uh, give it away, Andrew. What's the first thing you're going to show us today? The first one, really quick and small, but I'd like to call these out. Uh, you know, we talk about Maxa, Maxa stuff here on the show. This is the all-new Sateki Vegan Leather uh, MagSafe Wallet. So, if you maybe mm -hmm. you're not sure on Apple's fine woven ones, this mm -hmm. is a new option available. So slot here at the top, they say the whole thing will hold four cards because you have your slot here in the front, but also kapow, it turns into a stand mm. for your phone and we have an additional hidden slot here. So you put like your ID on the inside and then put your like credit cards and stuff on the outside, uh, but an additional slot here and look how big this finger hole is to get those cards out so much mm. easier than nice. on Apple's. 
So here it is on like the fine woven case. Uh, you can kind of see it. I like this. They say it holds four cards, vegan leather, built-in kickstand. Obviously, rotate your phone around. Use it like that. Uh, some cool stuff. This is this is a good, it's a simple updated wallet. I think it, it's not much thicker than Apple's, but I think it has enough added functionality. Like, especially when there's like no actual leather option from Apple, it's, it's just fine woven. And if you are hating on fine woven, you're going to have to go with something else because Apple has nothing now but fine woven MagSafe wallets. Yeah. So that, I, I like... All the companies that do leather, I feel like they're all like, hey, guess what? <laughs> Now's the time. <laughs> it's our time to shine. Um, I know. I was so, thinking about doing a video of, like, leather wallet alternatives. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think people would be interested in that because you can't get it from Apple anymore. But the Satechi one looks good. And I actually have a Satechi uh, desk mat. That's what I use on my desk. And I like it. It feels good. It feels good. All right. And lastly, this this I'm a little uh, envious of because you have it and I don't. And I'm I'm pretty excited for this. Andrew, show us the, the second and last thing that you're going to show ready? off today. Yeah, I'm ready. Here it is. So this is the new green power adapter. <laughs> it's nice USB-C. Try. There's nice a the USB-C port on the side, which is really handy. This goes to the all-new uh, docking station, which has now a removable cable, which is very mm -hmm. handy. Yeah. This seems more yeah. weighted to me. But I like that it has a color matched cable, of course, that goes the color matched power adapter, which uh -huh. all I guess would technically match with there this guy it here. Is. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. It's very the, dramatic. Very dramatic. Sonos Move Two. Oh, in the in the green, the new green. Goodness. Yes, it's in the That's new nice. green. That so looks nice. So you can see it in the flesh now. Um, does not look really dissimilar from the previous generation. Here's the new controls on the top, little mm -hmm. groove there to adjust things, which is definitely easier. Um, I still struggle with the controls. Like I'll put this out in the yard a lot while I'm like working, and then my hands will be like sweaty, covered in sawdust or dirt or whatever. I'm like I'm always reluctant to poke at it. Um, but yeah, this is the new That's one. We nice. talked about a lot Looks of the good. specs and stuff before, so I don't want to go through. All of that again. Um, the biggest refreshers here, so redesigned controls, longer battery life, like a full day of battery life, stereo sound, so now there's dual drivers at the top as well as the woofer. Um, you can use um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at the same time, which means you can connect to this over Bluetooth and then that'll jump it to your Wi-Fi network and play it through all of your other Sono speakers. It's mm. completely portable. You grab the thing on the back, take it with you. Um, water resistant to a degree, so it's enough that it can withstand like rain if you left it outside for the night. Um, and you can do line in audio via USB-C and you can even do um, output charging. So plug in your phone and you can charge up from this guy's massive internal new wow. battery, which is still replaceable after a few years of use. Put a new battery in it, extend the life even further. I really That's like cool. it. So I'll have a full review very soon. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me, but I, the biggest thing obviously is the sound. You can definitely notice a difference in the sound. I mean, when you're listening to a song that has left and right differentiation, like it's there, it exists. Right. Whereas before, it didn't. Like right. you, there was just no, there was no stereo sound at all before. So that is an, a a notable improvement. But at the same time, like when I was using, like I don't know if I'm sitting here like outside in the yard and thinking, man, I wish I could hear the left and the right channels independently. Like I just want like kind of like good sounding music outside. I think where those were more useful was when I had it inside and I was using it as like a standard inside bookshelf speaker. Hmm. I liked that more. Like it's sitting okay. like on my desk or something in front of me and I'm having the left and the right channels. So I'm like, Oh, that, that is nice. That adds like that extra kind of depth to the music that you're listening to. So I did appreciate that. I, I think it definitely sounds better. I mean, this thing's a slam dunk. I mean, they've improved like yeah. everything on it from the controls to the battery to the USB-C port to audio quality. Like everything about this thing is great. It's not the cheapest. So they do still have um, this guy, the Rome, which is nice. So it's like almost like water bottle size. So you just grab this, take it with you. This is still Bluetooth and AirPlay with just like silicone caps on the sides. Nice portable. This is like just 
their bigger portable one. It's quite hefty. Um, you're not going to carry this around <laughs> too much with you, but it's super nice. I really, really like the new model uh, a ton. Man, what? How is the? Because uh, I know the the base is different. The charging base, is it like improved in any way? Like, is it better than the old one? Or they do so many. Like, there's this is like the stuff that I like about Sonos. So I sure about the other one down, but yeah, we do actually have the green power adapter, and this is it's kind of funny how he did this. I've never seen anyone do it. You have your power adapter, Steven. Yeah. You have your wall yeah. side on the bottom. Usually your plug is here at the top, right? Which means right. you have a plug sticking straight out from the wall. Or they'll put it like middle on the sides or something, and it's like sticking straight down. They put theirs as close to the wall as possible, right here. So when it plugs in, your cable is almost flush against the wall, which is just like a nice little touch. That's um, nice. The power, The charging dock itself here, it... I believe they I thought it was a removable cable, but I don't see how this comes out. Uh, I'm wiggling it, I don't see anything. Yeah, but this is a out. smaller base. So I remember when I was at their event, and they talked about this the whole design process of making this base. Um, so it uses pogo pins at the back to charge via contact points on the bottom of the tr of the the thing. But they want this to be easy to place in. So with a lot of docks, you have to kind of like align it or you'll have to jiggle it or something to make sure it's like seated correctly. So the way these Sonos ones work, it's like a ring. It's like a hoop, like an oval yeah. um, that matches the bottom of the speaker. And then when you set it down, it's grooved, um, like it's slanted in a little yes. bit. And so what nice. that does is when you set your speaker, it basically self-aligns. Like, if you had it at an angle, it would just seat itself. Oh, so it rotates good. itself, like, in, and and boom. You're just Satisfying. in the dock perfectly. Yes. So this feels like it's a little heftier. Like, it feels like this has a little bit more weight to it than the prior mm. one. But, again, I don't have them both sitting. I, I left it upstairs. Um, it looks thicker. But yeah. You know, it looks, like, a little taller, you know, if it was flat, you know. Yeah, but... it, it looks a little it, – it looks slightly redesigned. It's a little more compact. It's a little heftier. Did you see them at the cable? Or was it on this is end it... that's supposed to be removable? I don't know. But this looks like it's no, permanently affixed to the to the ring. It, I think it's permanent. It's permanent. But I I actually like that it's a little higher. I mean, the first Sonos move, I love it. Mm -hmm. It sounds great. The dock is cool. It does seem like very like uh, thin and like around. Like it always like when you place it down, like it's usually fine. Like it doesn't you know miss a line. But I, I like the little higher base. You know, so it gives, feels a little more maybe secure as you're putting it in there. So. I will be getting one. I know, I, I know you haven't gotten a chance to test it, but do you know, or does it seem like you'd be able to do a stereo pair with this and a Sonos Move 1? Probably not, can't. right? Nope. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. I get, like, I understand. I, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> just, get two, just get two Move 2s. That's what you got to do. Well, uh. that's pretty cool. I'm excited. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get one because, uh, yeah, they sound good. They're great for outside, too. Uh, my black one, though, I should have brought it in, man. Maybe next time if we do a full review. I have a black Sonos move, and it's been out by the pool. And that thing is like, it looks like it's been snowed on just with all the salt and air. <laughs> like it, it, it I is was like, wondering how it looked, like how the color had faded over time on the, yours. The black, well, it's it's not in direct sunlight. So it's the black hasn't faded, but it's, there's definitely like, I'll bring it in next time. I'll, I'll show okay. it I'll show it uh, on camera. I'm, I'm going to go here. Hold on. Remind me next Thursday at 9.45 a.m. to bring Sonos Move. Okay, I got it. I'll have it on the next show. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, cool. I've been looking forward to hearing that. All right, uh, links to all the many things, Vuvuzelas to USB-C to <laughs> HDMI video capture cards. Those links are all in the show notes. <sighs> and, of course, you can go to YouTube.com slash Insider to watch lots of visuals today, so that was fun. You can get a hold of Andrew and myself on all the different platforms. Those links are in the podcast description as well. And as always, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. See you, everyone. <laughs>